in that sense, la, and colleagues, uh, former colleagues from the news, uh, thank you very much for inviting me. Uh, it gives me profound pleasure to be here to officiate the first ever, <coughs> first ever Talanoa session involving Pichilis University and the various government ministries and departments. Nothing gives me great pleasure and delight uh, than to see these new and robust uh, strategies put in place to lift the standard of living of our nation. And today's gathering marks yet another addition towards how educational institutions, uh, particularly our national university, can shift its thinking towards this endeavor. Ladies and gentlemen, I have time and again reiterated that research is one of the fundamental tools governing educational advancement. More so, the crux of research is that it is related to the needs of the nation meaning the outcomes can be reliably and effectively used for strengthening the various sectors of the economy. I have also stated that research should be poised at revealing outcomes which can be piloted into a society to lift the standard, fight issues and counter contemporary problems. So effectively, uh, every research finally should lead to improvements of the lives of uh, ordinary people. To this effect, universities play a very critical role as it holds a thinking community. That's where you'll find thinkers, people who continuously think. That's the thinking community. That's where you'll find the universities who, are, who hold people who, who continuously think and don't stop with a particular outcome, uh, output, thinking that's the end, that's it, you can't push. For example, universities in a country can be taken from an outside perspective as a pseudo-index of the government thinking and philosophy on growth and development. And what, I expect, what, what I mean by that is, if someone from outside looks at a, at a, at a country and if you find that there's a university, that, that gives an indication that this country has thinkers, this country has, uh, has a plan to push the frontier, and therefore we could go there and invest. Now, government sees university generally uh, as higher institutions of higher education. So what is expected of institutions of higher education? Universities are not only a place of teaching and learning of higher qualification, but it's also a place where new knowledge is created through consultancies and research. But there are also private sector organizations who also do consultancies and research. But why do governments look forward to universities why do government look forward to universities to take up the research uh, agenda of the government? Or why do governments um, look forward to universities to undertake those consultancies? Recently, the, the government advertised for someone to undertake a review of the national minimum wage. Not a single submission from FNU. It was three submissions only. The three submissions coming from such an important national consultancy, consultancy um, demonstrates uh, where we are. So why do, why do governments look forward to universities undertaking uh, consultancies and research? There are several real students. Uh, one is universities have a range of experts in various subject areas and are thus easier to find expertise in the various areas of study required. Uh, secondly, consultancy firms have profit motive and thus may tilt their research outcome based on what is generally accepted or what the funder may want. University researchers are expected to undertake research based on a scientific methodology and accepted philosophical uh, foundations. So thus acceptability of the findings are pretty much guaranteed. University academics are well respected in the community and are seen as the critic and conscious of the society. So research findings will be well taken by the rank and file. And that's why 
sometime back I had said that uh, people should always, academics should always ensure that um, whatever public comment that they make, it can stand scrutiny based on scientific methodology because people have a lot of respect, respect on academia and if, if researchers are tainted by a particular political um, view, um, that doesn't mean they cannot make a statement in public, uh, but, but they must ensure that that particular statement that they make in public is based on research or logical reasoning and the research process can be replicated to demonstrate that particular result. So, effectively what I'm saying is that governments look forward to universities doing the consultancies and research for them because it is taken for granted that public will accept the result because it comes out of a respected community of thinkers. Ladies and gentlemen, government fully understands that we can push for productivity increases via gains in cost efficiency or output efficiency. But we do understand that there are limits to efficiency gains. And that the entire production frontier can be pushed via technological innovations. So it is through technological innovations that we can push for increased productivity and thus improving the overall competitiveness of the firm in the ever-changing local and global market. It is for this reason that the last sitting of Parliament passed a legislation to establish a National Research Council. The objective of this legislation is to make provision for a national body to pursue and fund activities designed to raise the standards and development of research and development in the scientific health, education, industrial, technological, social, and economic areas, and I encourage or promote consideration of ethical issues relating to research and development. Ladies and gentlemen, one of the key characteristics of this bill is that it mandates the Council to maintain a sustainable fund to be known as the National Research Fund, which must be used for funding research and development proposals according to the priorities established by the Council. Now, the mere the fact that government drafted this legislation, took it to parliament, went to the standing committees, came back to parliament, was debated, demonstrates government's commitment to have a research-driven policy making. Now, for a small country in the Pacific to establish a national research council, and to outsource researching and research thinking to the thinking community and to allow the policy making to be driven by this demonstrates government's serious commitment to have policy making which ultimately would contribute towards government's vision of ensuring that we raise the standard of living of every region in the country. So that it's a major step forward to recognize that policy making should be based on research or should be driven by research. So through this national council, governments will become a strategic investor in research infrastructure, infrastructure and have major programs to invest in science, technology and innovation cap capability. And a major driver of this infrastructure and capacity building will of course be our national university, the national university. The overall goal of the Council is to ensure that any research undertaken must generate, again, both economic and social benefits. For too long, taxpayers also have been silently asking universities to demonstrate the benefit they provide to taxpayers and also to seek leverage additional sources of funding for research infrastructure, both capital for construction and to fund recurring costs for the operation and maintenance of that infrastructure. The timing is right. With the um, legislative, legislative, legislation to back uh, the university, um, I think this is the time that we all can shift our thinking, not away, but towards not only teaching and learning, but also towards uh, research which contributes towards 
policy making, of course it doesn't take away the university from undertaking basic research, research that <coughs> contributes to pushing the frontier of knowledge in a particular area. But eventually that too, eventually that too, if the language is right and it is accessible, which I'm going to talk about, to talk about in a second, will also contribute to improvement of standard of living of the people. There's no research. There's no research which is not for policy making. So ladies and gentlemen, this Illinois session today will not only allow ministries to start thinking about their research priorities, but should also look at the establishment of a link between the research and policy making, between research and policy making. Often you will find that we see a lot of research done by universities, but it fails to contribute to policy making, not because it is not worthy of policy making. As I said, all research has the potential of making policy contribution, but because there is this, there is there's no bridge between policy making and research. This research is done, published in uh, journals, uh, ranked journals, but it is not accessible to policy makers or it is not in that language for policy makers to uh, understand. Uh, in the policy making arena, we don't have people uh, who could understand the technical jargon in which research output is published in general. So not only uh, that it is not written in that language, but I've been struggling to have access to electronic database for long to assist me in, in my writings. Why can't universities open up the electronic database to us, some of us, who are keen to read, um, albeit all the restrictions that you may have for access to these electronic databases like JSTOR, Profess, etc. Allow people who would want to read where you deposit your research findings. And I also want to urge the university to ensure that uh, they do recognize and give points of credit to uh, articles which may not find its way to international ranked journals, but have been, of course, uh, blind reviewed and reviewed by experts, uh, but are published probably uh, in uh, regional or local journals. But again, um, it needs to, we need to ensure that these are uh, subjected to um, review by experts. So um, the university themselves uh, should do that to allow um, at, times, <coughs> at, at times academics and researchers feel that publishing in, on, on, or, or researching in local areas uh, may not be acceptable <coughs> uh, by the university. As, as a research output with that particular uh, point. So that is something that universities may want to look at. So ladies and gentlemen, I hope that by the initial research council we will establish a initial research community, which, is, uh, which also is supported by strong worldwide connectors, as the vice chancellor alluded to. There is quite a bit of uh, wisdom out there internationally that could support us uh, in uh, undertaking our research, mentor with our staff, our junior staff, to undertake that, this particular, um, a particular research. So, um, ladies and gentlemen, the Talano Association today embarks on the notion to create a solid partnership between the Fiji National University and the government of Fiji in the field of research, and it has never happened before. It has never happened, no university has taken this step to come forward uh, and say to government that we are here, we are ready to uh, uh, undertake research and um, tell us what areas you need to do research. And I, I must say that in this, with this culture of thinking, we can open up. There's so much data that we have, so much data that we have. We're willing to put this data on the platform uh, so that everyone has the same data and everyone can do solid research. Research it does not look at causality as uh, uh, correlation as uh, the uh, factor determining a particular outcome. As um, Professor said that you know, uh, 
after marriage, uh, people get obese and get densities. That doesn't mean that, you know, uh, you shouldn't get married. Uh, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, so um, I understand that this consultative process will look at areas of research needs uh, uh, and um, will pin down uh, the areas of urgent ones. And I do hope that uh, our government uh, ministries will uh, quickly list down the areas of research. We have a lot in Ministry of Education and uh, we are willing to open up uh, to uh, solid researchers who would want to come and work with our team or uh, work on the areas that we would want them to do. Work it. And uh, we're happy that uh, one version the researcher can take and publish in the journal that they want to and other version could come to us, which we can then uh, use it for policy making. So, um, by sense, I just want to commend uh, your leadership of the university, um, in particular on this one as well. Uh, this is the first time ever we have had this, uh, where university has come up openly uh, saying that we are willing to contribute to policy making, and uh, let's look at the areas that uh, that's important for, for the country. Uh, I think we need to look ahead uh, where we want to get to uh, as, a, as a nation and identify those areas of research which will help us. So I uh, wish you all the best for the deliberations today and uh, the arena is set for the Talano in, in spirit as well and I urge you all to make the most of this healthy initiative and I do hope that uh, we'll see some visible uh, outputs out of this which will help us in uh, achieving the outcome that we have for the nation. Thank you.